Let me know if this is bars. Right? I did my own little spin on it. Here we go. Fuck off. Slim thick with your cute ass. Hey, I might buy you a new bag. Hey, shorty looking real bad. I know you got a new man. And no, I'm not talking to you, Dan, because you came at my clan. Now I got to fight you and your mans. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm stupid. So, though, I love top five. I love, I love top five's voice. The world is a vast and beautiful place. Right. And most people are not fortunate enough to be able to explore it. Right. But thanks to Google Maps and Street View, you can now conduct your own virtual world tour for free. Right. And view and explore over 65 countries, spanning seven continents, all from the comfort of your own home. Mm -hmm. However, every now and then, something turns up Why that is that blurry? shocking or creepy for the viewer. Why is that blurry? And here we look at five occasions when Google Maps or Street View has thrown up something completely unexpected. Right. Be that the track of a serial killer oh that had yet God. to be found oh, when the street was photographed, or even the eerie building that was transmitting the mysterious Russian number station. This video is brought to you by Amino Apps, my go-to for catching up on the latest ghost photo or story on their paranormal community, where you can engage with each and every post and offer your thoughts on some of the creepy posts over there. I held a Q&A over on the paranormal page a few weeks back, so go check out my answers by clicking the link in the description or pinned YouTube comment to download Amino for free on iOS or Android. Once you're on Amino, search paranormal to join and you will see the Q&A and all the awesome paranormal posts. Thank you again for Amino for sponsoring this video, and now it's time to hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Here we go. The Village of Dead Dolls. What? If you look on Google Maps for a tiny village called Nagoro, located in the valleys of Shikoku, Japan, you'll get a shock, because as you follow the road through the village, all is not what it seems. As what you may have noticed, the village is populated not by people, but dolls. You got me all. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Okay. This will be done. Okay. This, this will be done. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Cool. Nah. We good. But all right. Nah. Nah. You got it. Nah. Nah. It's okay. Nah. You got it. Nah. Mm mm. Yo, if he, if, hey, if you snore like that, Get the hell away from me, please. If I ever find a woman and I think she perfect, right? But the first night I sleep with her and she snores, get the hell off her. Get nah, nah, you not nah. Mm -mm. You got me clucked up now, nah, nah. Oh my god, that's weird. That's like, that's like that short film I reacted to um a while back, and I think it was an ad. But I don't know. I don't know. But it was a short film that I did, and it it was only him, you know, him as a human being. But everybody else was just, they, they were like mannequins. But something happened, and he ended up hurting or killing the mannequins. But the mannequins turned out to be real people. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comment section. That's weird. That's weird to have a whole village or an area. Nothing but dolls that look like people. You're sick. You're sick and you need help. I'm not going to help you. I'm not. Mm -mm. You're sick and you need help. Oh my God, that is so creepy. Can you imagine driving, driving just on a, just on a road, right? And you think you see people, but when you get up close, it's not people. It's either dolls or mother clucking. Mannequins, I, I don't know what's creepier, dolls or mannequins. Like, they both creep me out. I lie to you not every time I go into J.C. Penney or Nordstrom's or Macy's or you know any or you know any place that has a mannequin. I'm like, nah, mannequins creep me out. And so do dolls. Oh my God, that's weird, yo. God, oh my. 
Mm. They are all the work of Mrs. Ayano, who returned to her childhood village after many years away. Get the hell away from me. And discovered that most of the residents that she formerly knew had either died or left. Oh my god. Feeling lonely, she first made a doll that resembled her deceased father. This was followed by recreations of other members of her family, which progressed to former residents of the village, all in the form of life-size dolls. There are around 350. Oh my god! Oh shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Yo, if you felt lonely, bitch, why didn't you just move? Hmm? Hmm? Why didn't you just find a real man, make some babies, and that's your family right there? Huh? What? Why didn't you just get, well, why didn't you get dogs, or a cat, or some animals? You know? Why didn't you, didn't get, what? Oh my god. Why didn't you, oh my god. Ah, ah, I feel like you could have did a lot, you could have did a lot more. I feel, I'm sorry. But when I was outside, I, I ran, not I ran, I walked into three spider webs. And I felt like the spider webs are off, but I feel like, I, I, I still feel like something on me. You know, don't, don't you know how like, you know, a bug lands on you or, you know, something is on you and then you get it off, but then you still feel like it's on you. That's how I'm feeling right now. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on no meds. I'm not on no nothing. I'm not, I'm not on that shit. Okay. I just, I feel like something's on me because earlier I walked through three mother clucking spider webs. I don't know how that happened, but I did. Um, you got me clucked up. Like, oh my God, that's weird, yo. Like, that's beyond weird. I feel like you could have did a lot, a lot, a lot more other things to feel a lot less lonely. Like, bitch, you got me fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. It's like, I don't, I don't mean to curse. I kind of do. But it's like, if I feel some type of way, and I feel very strongly, like, if I'm in my feelings, oh, oh best believe I'm cursing. I can give, um, no. Ooh, 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 ooh. All scattered around the village today, each representing a dead or former resident. Even the school has a few dolls sat at desks, waiting for classes to begin. Wow, well, they're gonna be waiting. Ayano has strategically placed the dolls of the people she once knew in the places she remembers they worked or frequented. They're weird. According to the story, it's claimed by locals that new dolls appear overnight, although no one has ever seen Ayano putting them in their positions. And an even creepier tale is that she creates dolls of people who are still alive in preparation for when they die. So, how, you know something, bitch? Ariel Castro's home. 2207 Seymour Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, my God. It doesn't mean much to most of you. Oh, no. And if you search on Google Maps, it's represented by an ominous blur. But behind the blur lies the home of former bus driver and father of four, right. Ariel Castro. Right. Who held three girls captive for over ten years. And this is what I don't understand. You got, you got, you have kids. You have your own kids. Unless you don't love your kids. Unless you don't give two shits about your kids. That came from you. How would you feel if somebody kidnapped your kids. And what, what did he say? Kept him, kept, kept him cap captive or prisoner or whatever. Uh, for like 10 years? What would you do if somebody just snatched up your kids? Huh? What would you do? That's crazy. How do you have your own kids and you do that to somebody else's kids? That's disturbing and weird. And you need to be, I don't, I don't even want to listen to the rest of the story because you just need to be, you need to be sent off into like, into a place that has those straight jackets and you can't you can't move like you can't move on them <laughs> right that's crazy yo like and that that goes with like that goes with like like i don't know like like anything like 
let's say uh you're you're a child i don't know a child predator or molester i don't know but you have kids how you gonna molest a child but you have kids can you imagine what your kid is going to, how your kid is going to react to their mom or dad being a, being a child molester? Like, can you imagine? Yo, if I ever, if I ever found out anybody in my family is on that shit. Uh-uh, uh-uh, bitch. Like, I'm gonna need, mm-mm, I'm gonna need that divorce paper so I can go ahead and sign that shit. No, I'm not, I don't want to be associated. I don't want to have nothing to do with no molesters. Mm -mm. Regardless of how old you mol you molesting. Like, regardless if it's a child or not, regardless if you doing that to an adult or not, you're still molesting people. Like, come on, that's disgusting. You know, I don't want to be associated with somebody that kidnaps kids, that kidnap people. Like, I don't, I don't want to be associated with that. You know? That's like me being associated with a family member or a friend that, you know, rob stores, you know, for like, for like five years strong, but never been caught. And you finally tell me, I don't want to be associated with you. I don't care if you're, I don't care if you're a family member or not. Come on. I don't understand. How can you have kids, your own kids, and you kidnap other people's kids? You must not have, what is that called? You must not have no morals or no conscience or anything. Maybe I'm using that wrong, but you're not right in here. Checked them to an unimaginable and inhumane existence inside the property. During the time this Google Street View was taken, the horror started in August 2002, when 21-year-old Michelle Knight accepted a lift from a man she vaguely recognized Damn. as the father of a girl she knew. Damn. It was a decision she would regret for the next 11 years. God. Michelle was taken to Castro's home in Seymour Avenue, where she was tied up and left in an upstairs room, where she remained for the next 11 years, mm -mm. after being chained to a wall and regularly abused, beaten and raped by oh Castro. My God. During her time in captivity, she suffered five miscarriages. I'm sorry. Fuck. See, now I'm starting to get emotional. Because what if I had kids? You know, one day I plan on having kids. You know? And, I mean, I know my kids. I want to have the best of the best Adidas on. So they can get out, out of collective situations. But hypothetically speaking, if they don't. And they, they end up like this. Best believe, I'm not doing no running. I'm coming to find you, and I'm coming to find you, and I'm going to kill you. I mean, there's no... I don't care if you kidnap my kid overnight. Like, I'm I'm beating you within inches of your life. Okay, I'm not going to kill you. That, I mean, that's that's like that's OD. But I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna seriously injure you to the point where you might as well be dead. You got another thing coming. If you think you're gonna kidnap my kid, I'm not gonna do shit about it. You got me clucked up. If you ever kidnap my kid, yo, like. I'm get well, obviously I'm getting my kid back that that same day. Best believe that. All right. Don't and don't worry how I'm gonna do it. I got connects. I got connections. I can make things happen. Feel me? Less than a year after Michelle's kidnap, on April the twenty first, two thousand and three, Castro picked up another girl. She was sixteen year old Amanda Berry who accepted a lift from Castro Is that after her? she had finished her shift at Burger King. Is that her? Initially, her disappearance was treated as a runaway until a week later, an unidentified male used her cell phone to call her mother, saying, I have Amanda. She's fine and will be coming home in a couple of days. 
Sadly, Amanda's mother died in 2006 of a heart failure Damn. and never saw her daughter again. Damn. Castro's third and youngest victim was 14-year-old Georgina de Jesus. He picked her up on April 2, 2004, as she walked home from school. Georgina knew him, as she was friends with his daughter. During her time at Castro's house, Georgina was chained to Michelle, and the pair were held on the top floor. Amanda lived separately in another room, and on Christmas Day 2006, she gave birth to Castro's daughter. Michelle was ordered to help with the birth, and Castro threatened to kill her if the baby didn't survive. Despite an initial scare, where the baby stopped breathing, Michelle was able to revive it and it lived. During the time Castro kept the girls imprisoned, he still held down his job as a school bus driver until he was fired in 2012. He also regularly held family barbecues and nights with friends at the house, when he would move the girls into the basement in case anyone heard them. He also occasionally took his daughter outside and even introduced her as the child he had with his new girlfriend. After 10 long years, it was Amanda that was finally able to make contact with a neighbour after she realised Castro had left the door unlocked. She escaped with her six-year-old daughter and alerted the authorities who rescued Michelle and Georgina. Oh man, I'm in the blind. I've been too mad and I've been missing for 10 years and I'm, I'm here, I'm fine now. All four of them were taken to the hospital and later released. Michelle was the last to be released as Castro had been particularly cruel to her and she had been beaten so frequently that she had to have her jaw reconstructed. Oh my god. Because she had endured so much abuse, after she was freed, Michelle legally changed her name to avoid the traumatic memories that she associated with her previous name. The full horror of the past 11 years was revealed, and Castro was sentenced to consecutive life terms in prison, plus a thousand years, all without any possibility of parole. But just a month after his conviction, on the evening of September the 3rd, 2013, Castro was found hanged by a bedsheet in his cell Damn. at the Correctional Reception Center in Ohio. Damn. As part of the plea bargain, Castro's house was demolished on August the 7th, 2013, watched by family and friends of the girls. But chillingly, the ominous blur on Google Maps is still a reminder of the horrors those poor girls had to endure there. Israel Key's truck. Now this next image, caught on Google Street View in 2011, may look innocent enough. After all, it's just a truck parked on a street. That is until you look at the name on the trailer, Keys Construction, and realise this truck and trailer belong to Israel Keys, a notorious serial killer who oh, committed shit. a series of rapes and burglaries oh my God. in and around Alaska, shit. and who murdered at least 11 people. Damn. Keys was born in Utah in 1978, and although he was brought up in a Mormon family, he showed no interest in religion. And when his family moved to Washington, he became friends with a man who went on to murder three people. Keyes later served in the US Army from 1998 through 2011. And it was during this period that his killing spree started in Washington state, where he killed at least four people. After he was discharged from the army, he did odd jobs for a few years before setting up a construction business in 2007 called Keyes Construction. By this time, he was based in Alaska. Keyes planned his murders, sometimes years in advance, and always killed far away from his home and never in the same area twice. In order to avoid detection, he would go on his murder trips with his phone turned off and paid for everything in cash. He also killed randomly and had no connection to any of his victims. Fuck. In 2011, Bill and Lorraine Currier of Essex, Vermont, went missing after Keyes broke into their home. Mm. He tied them up before driving to an abandoned farmhouse where he shot Bill before sexually assaulting and strangling Lorraine. Wow. However, their bodies have never been found. Wow. Keyes was meticulous in his planning of their murders. First, he flew to Chicago and then drove a thousand miles in a rented car where he picked up a murder kit that he had hidden two years earlier. The kit contained a handgun and various other supplies. After killing the pair, he moved the kit to a new hiding place in Parrishville, New York, in readiness for his next murder. It remained there until after his arrest. Keyes was finally caught after he kidnapped and murdered 18-year-old Samantha Koning, a barista working in Anchorage, Alaska. He held Samantha for a day, then murdered her, leaving her body in a shed. He then went off on a cruise. When he returned, 
he demanded a $30,000 ransom for a safe return and took a photograph of Samantha's dead body along with a four-day-old issue of the Anchorage Daily News, trying to maintain the illusion that she was still alive. He then dismembered her corpse and disposed of it in the Matanuska Lake, just north of Anchorage. Samantha's desperate family paid the ransom, believing she was still alive, but police were able to track keys after he used Samantha's debit card at various locations, and he was eventually arrested in Texas and extradited to Alaska. Keyes confessed to a string of offences, including armed robbery, rape, burglaries, arson, and murder, including at least one in New York State, that authorities have never been able to identify. But he was never convicted, because on December 2, 2012, whilst being held at the Anchorage Correctional Complex, on suspicion of murder, he committed suicide by cutting his wrists and strangulation. His suicide made him a rarity. He was a confessed serial killer, who was never condemned for his crimes. What what do you call people that's like that? What do you call people that that do something or does something so clucked up and they do it multiple times? Right? So so clucked up. Right? And instead of you know suffering the consequences and getting what you deserve they 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 just kill themselves is that i don't i'm being i'm being like that ass serious it's like what do you like do you call those people like like cowards pussy you know you're what what do you what do you call people that I don't know. You know, like, what do you call people? Say, for instance, I don't know, like, say, for instance, I, 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 I killed the Chinese president, and then I went to Australia, killed that president. Uh, you know, I went to Canada, killed that president. All right? I went to uh, Brazil, killed that president. America, killed that president. All right? And right before they... I don't think they would lock me up. I think they would just shoot me dead on. But instead of, you know... You no, know, say for instance, I did all that killing... No, 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 scratch that. Say, for instance, I, I went to, like, five states, right, and I shot, no, I killed about 10 people. That's 50 people. Say, for instance, I did that, right, and, uh, you know, the cops, FBI, CIA, they, they, they saw me, and right before they were about to lock me up, Lock me up, right? Because I don't think they would even lock me up. I think they would just shoot me head on, right? But say for instance, they locked me. They, right before they locked me up, and put handcuffs on me. I did something to kill myself, so I don't have to, you know, spend the rest of my life in jail or something like that. Like, what do you call those people? Instead of, you know, suffering the consequences, they, they, I guess take the easy way out, I, I don't know. What is chilling is just what was hiding Who is that? Track. Who is that? Google Maps caught the image. Who, who, somebody was in that passenger Philip seat. Philip and Nancy Garrigo's house. This street view image taken in July 2007 looks ordinary enough, just a house in a suburban street in South Lake Tahoe, California. Yeah. Slightly neglected, but nothing that stands out. Right. The image also showed the homeowner leaving his house and followed behind the Google vehicle for a while. Oh wow, that's weird. However, at the time this was taken, in a shed behind the house, a young woman was being held captive. Oh my god. Her name was JC Duggard Aww. and she had been abducted 16 years earlier She's when pretty. she was an 11-year-old walking home from school. Aww. The man in the truck is her abductor, you convicted did? sex offender, Philip you, Garrido. You are such a... Garrido oh. and his wife Nancy snatched JC 
on June the 10th, 1991, as she walked to catch her school bus. You're both sick. After pulling up beside her in his truck, Garrido rolled down his window and rendered her unconscious with a stun gun. Oh my god. Nancy then bundled her into the car and held her down as she drifted in and out of consciousness. They then drove her for three hours to their home in Ooh. Antioch. Why? Initially, Dugard only had contact with Philip, who would regularly rape her whilst handcuffed in the tiny soundproof shed he held her captive in. But after seven months, he introduced her to his wife Nancy, who initially showed her some compassion, bringing her milkshakes and soft toys. Compassion my ass! No! You're in cahoots with him! You're his wife! Y'all do this together! So cluck all of that compassion shit! I don't want to hear that! Cluck all of that Oh, are you okay? No, bitch. Get the hell away from me before I cluck you up. Okay? Please. Cuz I'm 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 this close. This close. To clucking you both of y'all up. So you miss me with that compassion shit. You miss me with that sympathy shit. Like no. Y'all do that. Y'all 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 Y'all, y'all, y'all work together, like, both of y'all do this, like, I'm, no, 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 I don't know, God knows, God only knows how long y'all been doing this, so I don't want to hear that. You're in this, to, you're in this with him, to death do us part, right, bitch? But who, over the years, turned on JC, and became jealous of her, and when Philip was jailed for failing a drug test, she became Dugard's jailer, until he returned. Eventually, the Garridos released JC from her handcuffs for short periods. Why? Although she was kept locked in the shed with no access to doctors or dentists. And at the age of 13, she was pregnant with her first child. Oh my god. She later gave birth to a daughter on August the 18th, 1994. Hey. JC learned about babies and childbirth from watching programs on the tiny TV she was supplied with her. Her second daughter was born on November the 13th, 1997. Second? JC was able to take care of her daughters and protect them from Garrido. After many years living in the shed, Garrido eventually built an eight foot tall fence around the backyard and set up a tent for JC and her children, and she was allowed to walk outside. The Garridos agreed that JC was to call Nancy mother and that she was to teach her daughters that she was their sister rather than their mother. And when JC and her daughters were eventually allowed to come into contact with other people, this is the story they told. Oh my god. JC was also allowed to work as a graphic designer in Garrido's print shop, where she had access to a phone and email, but remarkably, she made no attempt to alert anyone about her childhood abduction. JC and her daughters also had contact with neighbors who never suspected a thing. What? To the outside world, JC was going by the name of Elisa, but when in 2004, Philip went to a University of California Berkeley police officer with JC's two daughters to seek permission to hold a special event on campus as part of his God's Desire program. The events manager became suspicious and after discovering Garrado was a sex offender, she arranged another meeting and again she was concerned about the girl's appearance and behavior, so arranged for the family to meet with a parole officer. When the family arrived for the meeting, they were separated and an agitated JC was asked to confirm her identity. She insisted her name was Elisa and defended Garrado. It wasn't until the police arrived and Garrado admitted he had kidnapped and raped her that she identified herself as JC Duggard, the schoolgirl who had been missing for 18 years. The full horror of those 18 years in captivity were revealed and on April 28, 2011, the Garrados pleaded guilty to kidnapping and rape by force. Philip was sentenced to 431 years to life imprisonment. Why didn't you say and life? And received 36 years. What, 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 what? JC retained custody of her children and was soon reunited with her family. Since her release, JC has written a book about her life in captivity entitled A Stolen Life. That's one hell of a story to tell. UVB76. Now we've talked about the buzzer on Top Fires before. The mysterious Russian radio signal, also known as UVB-76, that has been broadcasting since the late 1970s, with the earliest known recording in 1982. The signal which broadcasts on 4625 kHz has baffled people for years, 
with many questioning its purpose and the meaning of the messages that can be heard. It mainly emits a short, monotone buzz 25 times a minute, all day, every day. However, every few years, the buzz stops and a Russian voice can be heard, reading out a mixture of numbers and names. Initially, the broadcast was thought to be recording, playing continuously on loop, but this was dismissed, and it was revealed the buzzer noise is manually generated, as often you can hear activity in the background, suggesting it had a base. The question was, where was it? Efforts to locate where this signal was coming from led to a Russian military base on the outskirts of Povarovo, a small town 19 miles north of Moscow. It can clearly be seen on Google Maps. But when the signal changed in October 2010, it was realised that the station had changed locations. The move was followed by a flurry of activity and voice messages. Wires established a signal in its new location, and a new call sign was also heard. After the station changed location, urban explorers were keen to get into the old base, and now armed with the Google coordinates, two groups travelled to the remote town and managed to bypass the guard dog and infiltrate the abandoned bunker and military buildings, where for over 30 years the buzz had been transmitting from. They found out from a local farmer that a fierce storm in 2010 had forced the military outpost to be evacuated, which explains the change of location. They described the place as quiet and lonely, with a maze of corridors and rooms. They also found a book that contained a log of messages sent by UVB-76, providing physical proof that they were in the right place, along with confirmation that it had been run by the Russian military. But the mystery is far from being solved. The buzz and sporadic voice messages can still be picked up, and legions of listeners tune in via radios and online streams every day and all attempts to ascertain its new location have so far proved fruitless. As unlike before, it seems that UVB-76 is now emanating from multiple transmitters across Russia. There are lots of theories on what the purpose of the radio station is, with the most popular being that it is the audible version of Russia's dead man switch system, an automatic nuclear weapons control system operated in the Cold War that can automatically trigger the launch of Russian intercontinental ballistic missiles in the event that a nuclear strike is detected. A device that is not supposed to be still in use, but is rumoured to still be switched on and fully function should the need arise. This seems unlikely, but who knows? The buzz is more likely to be a channel marker used to discourage others from using the same frequency, so the Russian military can communicate through coded messages to multiple units at the same time but still, no one really knows. Although thanks to Google Maps and a few brave urban explorers, at least we know for sure that it is something to do with the Russian military. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed, and I know some of these were a bit upsetting. So I wanted to end on something a little more lighthearted, because thankfully, not everything on Google Maps or Street View is sinister. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you right back here next Saturday for another video. Mm. Mm -hmm. Some, most, I think, every story except uh, no, uh, the last one was very, very, very disturbing. Like to the point where I would, I just wanted to cut off the video and 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 just say, hey, you know what? Y'all can just watch the rest. Um, the link is in the description, right? Cause I'm not about to watch it, but I did. Um. I kind of do regret it because I feel like I'm still like on edge. Like I'm still, I'm still like, you know, I'm still kind of shooken up by some of these, uh, by some of these, uh, events that happen. But, um, oh my God. I'm not like crying or anything, but I'm just saying like. It's just, it's, I'm not crying, it's just I have an eyelash in my eye. And I hate that because something so small that gets into your eye can be so irritating or like so painful. I guess that's why your eyes are like, your actual eyeballs are very sensitive. Um, but the, the fact, the fact that we live <clears throat> in a world 
with psychos, serial killers, rapists, you know, weirdo, like, when I say weirdos, I mean, like, weirdos to, like, the fullest extent, because I'm weird, but, like, I'm a good weird, you know, like, I know I'm weird, right, but, like, people still love me, people still care for me, right, I'm not the type of weird that doesn't know I'm weird, and that be doing some weird, creepy shit, like, I I know people that are weird and creepy. You know, like I have a coworker, sixteen. All right, and then I have another coworker that late thirties, I want to say thirty-eight, I think. He has a wife, and she's about the same age. They both they both work, same place. I work, and she told me I'm not I'm not saying no names, but she she told me sixteen year old told me that uh excuse me excuse me she was on break, she's about she was heading to the break room, and when she went into the break room, old dude, right was already in the break room, and he was just by himself, and all I'm saying is. When she entered the room, the break room, the 16-year-old, when she entered the, the break room, instead of saying, hi, or how are you, or, uh, you know, I don't know, hey, or something, something normal, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not laughing, but, like, instead of saying something normal, as soon as she came in, he was like, how old are you? You know, and she said it, 16. I don't know what happened after that, but all I'm saying is, that's a bit weird. You know, you're not going to say no hi or hey, how are you? Um, it's good to see you. Just as soon as they, as soon as they come into, as soon as they, as soon as they come into the break room, how old are you? That, that's a bit weird. I'm, I'm not even going to lie with you on that. <clears throat> um, but I can't, that's like, that's, that, that, the fact that we live in a world where people do some clucked up shit is beyond me. I don't have no friends that's like that or, or anything close to what's, what happened in this video. And if I do... I'm not going to be friends with you no more. And if I did, or like if I knew people like that, best believe I'm keeping my distance. And if you know anybody that's like this or similar to, to people that were in this video, stay the hell away from them, keep your distance. Please have your guard up and be cautious 24-7 when you're around them. That's all I'm saying. But that first story with the dolls in the village, you completely missed me with that. Oh my God, that's... There's something really wrong, wrong with her. Like, that's crazy. Because she... Because she, uh... Didn't want to feel lonely. She made dolls like you couldn't, couldn't get no pets. You couldn't, couldn't, you couldn't get a dog or a cat, you know, a parrot. Hmm. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't find yourself a boyfriend, right? Couldn't, couldn't find yourself a man, a friend. Couldn't find nobody to have babies with, right? And you make kids, and now you have a family, so you won't be lonely. You just had to make dolls. You just had to make it weird. You just had to make it creepy. Okay. Okay. Well, well, you can t you continue to do that. Um, just over there where you are. Do not extend it. You know, just, just keep it in that area. Matter of fact, you know, have a fence or like you know a wall in your, you know, in in, in your circle in your village, and just cut everybody completely off. Cause I don't know anybody that would want to be a part of that. That's, and if they do want to be a part of your doll life, let them let them be a part of it. You know, 
sky. That's weird. You know, you just build a wall, and and you do you. Don't let mm -mm. just and and stay there. Yeah, just just stay there for the rest of your life. Just keep building dolls and stay there. Don't never ever come out that wall, out that village, ever, please. God, God, keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.